Hello everyone, Andrew Alaka, and welcome to Railroader, a new game on the channel. I recently got it. I spent like 20 hours so far in the game, and these hours felt like one. I'm having a lot of fun, so I wanted to start a playthrough for my YouTube channel. So let's start a new game right now. How do you? How should I name my railroad? Uh, you can use the random generation tool. And it's gonna generate a railroad name and its reporting mark. Um, I haven't found um, anything that I really like, so it's gonna be uh, stuck down and eastern. Railway properties. A reporting mark is dirt. Uh, I'm just gonna just change my save game to make it different from my uh, already going save game. So we're gonna go through the uh, tutorial. So we'll get a look at what it looks like. It looks like um, I think it. The tutorial is still incomplete. I don't know if they plan on changing anything. Uh, keep in mind, it's a uh, early access, so it's not feature complete yet. There might be some bugs or stuff like that. I haven't really encountered any bugs, but uh, that's a possibility. So there we are in East Whittier. Uh, basically, what it says is we just bought the railroad. There's a part of it that was washed out. There was a flood. There's uh, bridges that are gone. There's this locomotive here that's uh, derailed and in pretty bad shape that we're going to need to recover and repair. So this one is just dragging the window around. Uh, what we have to do right now is before we can run passenger and freight, we get familiar with the engine and take coal and water, risk QRD rail locomotive, uh, order more coal through the interchange. We'll see that a little later on a passenger train and some of our first contracts for our customers. So this one is the camera. I'm getting pretty familiar with it, but. It's very different from any other uh, train sim you've played before. So you have two camera. You have the overhead camera and the first person camera, and both of them can be uh, teleported and moved around separately. Um, it's very different from, let's say, train sim classic, train sim world. Um, it's, I would say, it's. Uh, uh, it's a bit confusing. I would say it's a bit confusing at first, but once you really get to work with it, you can see how you can take advantage of it. But so far, we have a first person camera, so this one has a uh, limited speed it can move around. So we're running around using WASD and Shift, and we're limited to anything on the ground. We can't go up. We can we can jump, but that's how far we can go. Uh, you can zoom. You can zoom with uh, your mouse wheel. You can click the mouse wheel to reset your zoom. And you hold the right mouse button to look around. And if you press two, you are in the overhead camera and you'll even see your character like here that's our character so you know that if i was to switch to my first person camera you pressing the number one no keyboard that's where i am if i go back to two and then you can still using your route your Using your right mouse button, you can look around, WSD. If you press shift, you go faster. And if you use control, it's going to be even faster. 
let's go back here and they say here the cameras are completely independent you can use this to your advantage i don't remember them uh yeah i don't think they mentioned in the tutorial but if you use Control t oh, i opened the console if you use Control t and using your mouse you can teleport so let's say we want to take a look at derp one our locomotive right there i press Control t and it's teleporting me right where my mouse was pointing so if i it just right behind tender Control t there we are So uh, they want us to um, board the engine. This one right here. You can uh, use a ladder in first person mode. You must be in first person mode. You can use a ladder and climb into the engine like so. One thing you can do if you're away, and this one is the closest one, press control zero. Uh, you need to select uh, the locomotive first. So you need control click. We'll select your loco and then control zero. Or, oh, yeah, you need to select it right there at the bottom right. Select control zero. There you go. So that'll teleport your character inside the locomotive. So if we go in second. Uh, so now our little character is set right there. So what do they want us to do? Uh, okay, the controls, the controls are fairly easy. You have the train brake. In the bottom right here, the left here, you got the train brake, got the independent brake. That's only a locomotive and a tender. You got your reverser front and reverse forward and reverse and then you have your throttle uh okay i'm gonna skip that if you want to read it's up to you you can pause the video or play it yourself if you're familiar with rail simulators you already know what's an independent brake and what's a train brake Uh, the reverser again we'll cover that a little later and then uh, control click okay so more cameras I think I already talked about the hood controls uh, the colors we'll see that a little later I'll talk about it but uh, basically got four colors here so we here we have our locomotive and tender once we're hooked to many two more cars You'll see a little more uh, rectangles here, and their color will represent the state of their brakes. So if they're white, they're released. If they're red, they're, they're applied. If they're in between, they're partially applied. If they're purple, it's a handbrake is, is applied. And once they're gray, that means they're derailed. So, more. Uh, Control the bell, the whistle. So B is your bell. Um, the sound's not really great. I mean, it, it, they could be planning to change it. I mean, it's early access still, but you can hear it loop. You can hear sound of a sort of a background noise to it, and it's gonna stop abruptly. I'm gonna press B. And it's gonna cycle its sound and it's gonna stop abruptly. There you go. Uh, the horn is H and shift H, two different pitches, low and high. That's a low one, that's a high one. Or you can use the V key and moving your mouse up and down, it's gonna quill the whistle. Let's say I press V, and then lower my mouse. J is for our headlights, and then zero 09 is first the last car, and then you can use um, shift 
9 and 0 to move between your cars and your consists. Since we only have two, it's not going to be very useful right now. And like I mentioned, Control 0 will jump inside your selected car. Uh, the switches, fairly basic. Uh, they want us to go to the water column. Yeah, shut up, okay. Um, let's get moving. We'll set our switch. It's already set to the left here. So we're gonna fill up the water first. Let's go in reverse, a little bit of throttle. And we are lined up to our water spout. For some reason, it doesn't uh, take into account that the hatch is open or closed. You should have to open it before it starts filling up, but apparently not. Maybe they'll fix that later. Uh, and then we'll go and fill up the coal. Okay, the water, then they'll go coal. We'll have to pull for it just a little bit, and we'll fill up the coal. We are full. We line up to our little cold tender here and we lower the chute. It's going to fill up automatically. It's going to stop automatically as well once your tender is filled up. Right now we don't have enough coal to uh, fill up the tender completely, but more than enough to do whatever we need to do today. So let's raise our chute. So they want us to go to our engine. So we'll need to go past the switch here, back up to the engine. Um, they're talking about the map. So M to open the map, scroll wheel, control T to teleport. So I, can, I mentioned that earlier. It also works in... Uh, the map view. So let's say I control T right behind engine number one. It took me right there. So right now I'm in uh, overhead camera. If I was to go in first person camera, and it could also teleport this camera. So both cameras can be worked independently like so. There you go. So right now I'm in front of that locomotive. And you can also uh, select the engines from the map view. So if I was to control click on number one from the map, see right here, I'm so, I have number two selected. If I click control and click on number one, it's selected number one. So I could follow. So you'll see as as you play with it, you'll learn to take advantage of the cameras. It To me, it took a long time. And it's not really that well explained in the tutorial, at least uh, for me. Maybe for you it's going to be clear. Everyone has a little uh, different way of understanding things. So let's release our brakes. Let's get moving. I'm going to go in first person view and teleport.
give it some breaks. Throat switch. And reverse. Okay, re-railing is shift R, so we are extremely strong or we have an insanely long pry bar. Let's just uh, slow down our engine right there. So you're next to your derail unit and you spam shift R. And there you go. We just by ourselves pushed like a steam locomotive onto the tracks. Pretty impressive. Uh, let's slow down or number two shift R again and it's re-railed so we will hook to it They want us to take it to the shed. I don't know if it's. I don't remember if we need to connect to here the, the airline. Probably not. I mean, it's white, white and beige, so it means the brakes are released. Yeah, it's moving freely, so we don't need to apply any air. Switch right here. So they want us to take that into the shed. So this switch is lined up properly. We will take it in this one for the moment. We're doing five. We could do a little, a little more than that. I'll skip the steps a little bit, but um, while our engine is uh, moving, we will go into the company menu. Locations are east with your engine service, so that's the engine service right here. The repair track is highlighted right here, and we need at least one worker to work for us to repair the engine. Let's calm down. We're doing 10. So what I did is I hired a worker. Um, things in this game work uh, from midnight to midnight. So our worker is going to start working at midnight. So we can hire like 10 and fire 9 today. And it's going to take effect at midnight. So if we hire 10 and fire 9 later, we only going to have one worker for tomorrow. So you can add and remove as you wish during the day it's not going to take effect until the next day and only counts at midnight so um can't move through here whoops here and might want to apply the brakes 
like so. So what I did is like control clicked on the engine and I have the option to apply the end brake. So back to this one. Good. Uh, this uh, we already hired the worker. I'm not gonna go every, you know, over every detail in the tutorial. You kind of have to do that by yourself. But the I key, basically, you talk about the I key. So the engine service is right here, and it's gonna t tell us how much coal we have. We don't have any coal out there. We have 4,000 gallons of fuel. We don't have any diesel engines right now but we can buy some later and we have today no worker but tomorrow we're gonna have one and they cost fifteen dollars per day and you can hire one well a fire one so you can hire two three pardon me and then fire two and it tells you how much workers are going to have tomorrow so you have one like i said you can change your mind as much as you want during the current day and it's going to not going to take effect until the next day so this is worker way bill and interchange we'll cover that a little bit later uh right now what they want is to uh for us to buy some coal because we don't have any coal for our engines so what we'll do we'll take that coal hopper to the interchange so the interchange is those two tracks right here so they're i don't know which one they don't mention which one in the game but they say the big class ones uh you can see with the reporting marks there's southern there's uh uh b and o there's a couple of big railroads that at, at least you get their rail cars you don't see anything rail cars magically appear at six o'clock in the morning that's when your uh, interchange is serviced so uh loaded cars will appear there loaded or empty so you'll have cars tagged for industries you take them there they're going to be loaded or unloaded depending on what they're they're going and whatever, and you need to take them back for them to take to somewhere else in the magical land of wherever else outside the map of this game. So, uh, right now we'll use the opera to buy more coal. So we will line up our switches. That's good. Let's line up this one for the car. Release the brakes. Meanwhile, we'll come next to this car, control click on it, go to operations tab. So uh, here we will tag our car for what we want to do. So loads, loads means loaded cars go to, and it goes to the Whittier coal loader, which is right here. And empties too, it goes back to the interchange to uh doesn't tell where but basically tells uh, the, the empty car goes to the interchange the big class one takes the rail car away have it filled up somewhere else and they bring it back to the interchange and you take the loaded car to the coal loader right here so if we press tab we see a car number and where it's going to when uh, the tag like so is uh, solid it's not transparent when it's transparent it means the car is spotted so we'll see that a little later so it's tagged so that's what they said right right of what i just explained is basically what they're saying here a tab for viewing the wheel bills so connecting the brake line so there's two ways you can do it you can come uh, click on the glad hand and operate the angle cock manually or what you can do if you're a little hurry or lazy is you shift click on the glad hand and that opened 
both the angle cocks. Um, you'll see on some cars, the angle cock is kind of awkwardly located and it's hard to reach and try to click on it. So shift click is going to do a huge favor in this case. So our lines connected. Let's reverse. Or reverse past that switch. Has that switch here? Then we will back up to the interchange. You can use the steps if you want to write the cards. Oh yeah, one thing you can do if uh, the car right now is selected. So if I was to go over uh, the destination, it's going to over... Let's break. Let's set the break so I can show you another one. Uh, so, like I said, if you hover over the destination, it's gonna highlight the tracks. But if you were to do it from here instead, you can highlight the tracks by pointing towards your waybill. They can show and hide with the tab key. Any second now, that tag right here is gonna go semi transparent. There you go, that means the car is in the proper spot. Let's set the brakes, let's go here and close the angle cock on loco. And our car is spotted. By six o'clock tomorrow morning, it's gonna disappear and reappear magically loaded with coal. So that's a brake line trading a hopper for a coach. So pull a hopper from the fuel track to the lead track, and then, and then, and then. so they want us to take it here. We already did. So now they want us to run the passenger train. So we'll connect to our coach right here so we need to back up all the way there Let's get moving a little faster. Wait for the car. No, delete that. We'll just take a look at the switch right here so we don't run into the caboose. We're set to normal, so straight.
we'll go past the switch right here. Let's wait for the engine. Let's wait for a locomotive. Set our switch, release the brakes, reverse into our coach. Always trying to connect. I say under five, but five is a little high for me. I aim between three and four. So we're 5.7, so I'm just gonna give it a little bit of brakes. Perfect. Shift click, connect the clan hands, and open the valve. See, like this one is hidden underneath. It's hard to see. You have to go across on the other side. And even then, we stop climbing. And there's no crouch key. So, you can do it from far away, but it only goes like few percent at a time it's not that great so like so uh the brakes are not applied so we're ready to go uh what i'll do is i'll wrap up this episode next episode we're gonna run the passenger and i'll introduce something they don't really explain in the tutorial they mention it in the manual but they don't talk about it in the tutorial, and I think that's really, really important that you uh, use it if you want to grow and have more and more cars to deliver and pick up. Otherwise, you'll just run out of time. It's going to be AI trains. So until then, well, I hope you enjoyed this first episode of Railroader. If you like that, just subscribe, like the video, leave a comment, let me know. What you think? Do you have you do you play the game? Are you interested? I mean, I recommend it. It's early access, but it's really awesome. If you can just work around the UI and the tutorial, missing some information, you're gonna have a lot of fun. So until then, thanks for watching. Catch you next time.